Old Sultan and His Friends From the Tales of the Brothers Grimm A countryman once had a faithful hound who was called Sultan, and who had grown old in his service. He had lost all his teeth and could no longer follow with the pack. One day the countryman stood before the door with his wife and said to her, Old Sultan is no longer of any use. I shall shoot him tomorrow. But Sultan's mistress, who had great pity for the faithful animal, exclaimed, How can you destroy him after he has served us so many years and lived with us for so long? I am sure we could spare him some allowance for his old age. No, no, replied her husband. That is not just reasoning. He has not a tooth in his head and is of no further use in keeping away the thieves, for they are not afraid of him, so he may as well go. If he has served us well, so has he also been well fed and could eat as much as he wanted. The poor dog, who was lying stretched out in the sun, not very far off, heard all that was said, and it made him very sad to know that the morrow would be the last day of his life. Now Sultan had a very good friend, a wolf, who lived near. So in the evening he slipped out into the forest to visit him, and complained to him of the fate which awaited him. Listen, Grandfather, said the wolf. Take courage. I will help you out of your trouble. I have thought of something. Tomorrow morning early, your master and his wife are going out into the fields hay-making, and they will take their little child with them. While they are at work, they will lay the child under the hedge in the shadow. You lay yourself by him as if you meant to watch him. I will wait till all is quiet, and then I will run out of the wood, seize the child, and carry it away. Then you must spring after me with the greatest zeal as you used to do in your hunting days. I will let the child fall, and you shall bring it back to its parents again, and they will believe that you have saved it from me, and will be the more thankful because they intended to kill you. Instead of that, you will be in full favor and nothing will ever cause them to give you up. The dog followed this advice, and as it had been planned, so it was accomplished. The father screamed as he saw the wolf run away with his child through the wood, but when poor old Sultan brought it back, his joy and gratitude knew no bounds. He stroked and patted the old dog, saying, Nothing shall ever hurt you now, you dear old dog, and you shall never want for food and shelter as long as you live. To his wife he said, Go home at once, wife, and cook some bread and milk for poor old Sultan. It is soft and will not require strong teeth to bite it. And bring the pillow from my armchair. He shall have it for a bed. And so, from this time, old Sultan had every comfort and contentment that his heart could wish. By and by, Sultan went to pay the wolf a visit, and told him joyfully of his good fortune. Grandfather, he said slyly, I suppose now you will shut your eyes and not see if I carry away a fat sheep from your master's flock. It is very hard to get food nowadays. I can't help that, said the dog. My master trusts in me, and I dare not allow you to touch his property. The wolf, however, did not believe the dog spoke in earnest. So he came in the night, slipped into the fold, and would have carried off a sheep if Sultan had not forewarned his master of the wolf's intention. He watched for him and gave him a good combing with the flail till he was almost bare of hair. So he was obliged to rush away, crying out, however, to the dog, Only wait a little, you false friend. You shall pay for this. 
The next morning, the wolf sent a challenge to the dog by his friend, the wild boar, who had promised to stand second. They appointed to meet in the wood, and poor old Sultan had no one to stand by him but a cat who had only three legs. Puss had, however, plenty of spirit, although she hobbled along on her three legs with great pain, yet her, sta her tail stood erect as if she cared for no one in the world. The wolf and the wild boar were already on the appointed spot, but when they saw their adversaries approaching, they thought that the cat's tail was a saber, and that each time Puss humped her back as she hopped, it must be a large stone which Sultan intended to throw at them. They were both so frightened that the wild boar crept in among the dried leaves, and the wolf sprang up a tree. The dog and the cat were very much surprised when they reached the place to find no one there. But the cat espied something on the ground which he took for a mouse. Now the wild boar, when he crept among the dried leaves to hide himself, left his gray ears sticking out. And when the cat began to smell about, she saw the ears move, and taking one of them for a mouse, sprang forward, caught the ear in her teeth, and bit it in half. The wild boar started up with a terrible scream, exclaiming, There's the real offender up in the tree, and ran away as fast as he could. The dog and the cat looked up and saw the wolf, who was so ashamed of his cowardice, and so angry with his pretended friend who had betrayed him, that he came down from the tree and made friends with the cat and the dog. From that moment, the end.